Okay, so it's almost a decade ago now when I made the decision that I wanted to branch out from my computer geek background into the world of aerospace. And so after having kind of made that decision, I buckled down, I studied hard for a year or so, and I reached the somewhat surprising conclusion that this actually wasn't all that complicated, that in many ways it's kind of simple. So given that point, uh, I founded Armadillo Aerospace. We started building a lot of rocket ships, and we've gone through dozens and dozens of different things. And I have to modify that position a little bit now in that it still really isn't that complicated. It is simple compared to a lot of things that we do nowadays in the modern world. I mean, the work that I do in video games is actually far more complicated than the aerospace work. But the aerospace work, while it may be simple, is not easy. And that's an interesting point where we can sketch out all of our vehicle subsystems essentially on the back of a napkin. I can draw it all out and say, this is how the vehicle works. This is how they've worked for the last several years after we sort of stabilized on our current path. But making them actually work reliably every single time, that actually has a lot of challenges to it. And the Lunar Lander Challenge here has been uh, kind of a good indicator of that, where the first year when it came out, it was announced six months or so before the competition, we were able to put together a couple vehicles, build them up, and have them theoretically ready to fly. Uh, but honestly, we would have needed really good fortune to be able to win the prize that year. It's just that wasn't enough time to be able to go out and get things tested as they should have been. And while when we got there, we were able to perform three flights on cue, which I was actually quite proud of. We had 10 or 20,000 people there in the crowd when the tent countdowns came down, we lifted off and we flew. And we made three flights of the proper duration, but we couldn't string two of them together back to back in the window uh, to win the prize there. We had problems with some of our initial navigation and then with our choice of landing gear there. So after having come out of that, we're not horribly disappointed. Uh, we thought we made a good shot at it. But then we went out and we made sure that we really were going to be ready for the next time. We went out on our own at our own test site and did the flight. You know, we took the video of it. Here it is. This should have won us the prize uh, almost two years ago now at this point when we did those in Oklahoma. So we kind of figured, all right, we've got things in hand. We carried on with the rest of the work that we were going to be doing. You know, we are pursuing our larger goals towards suborbital and eventually orbital space. You know, we build up our modular systems and so on. So when it came time for the second lunar lounge, we thought, all right, we've done dozens of flights with all of these. It's going to take bad luck in some way for us not to win this year. And in the end, we made three more flights that year and did not string two of them together. And we ran into some issues with the engine starts that we chalked up to differing conditions at temperature and altitude in New Mexico. And those were unexpected. We had no basis in any of our dozens of tests to expect that to be a problem. So we go in, and on the third year, we've got a different class of engines. We've built up lots more things, done lots more tests. And we almost had uh, you know, an almost tragic thing at the end where we had been concentrating on our commercial ex endeavors throughout that year, not really paying that much attention to the Lunar Lander Challenge because we figured pretty much we know everything that's gone wrong. We've got more reliable engines now. We expect it all to just work. But uh, we ran into some, uh, you know, some problems at the very end with uh, testing permits and so on that really, I think we owe George Neal personally some thanks for getting us through those very last things and allowing us to get a couple weeks of testing in before we could uh, get to the Lunar Lander Challenge this year. And so in the end, we did go in and get our three flights off, two of them within the, actually all three within the required time window, uh, and win the first level of the prize here. We were not able to win the level two prize, even though we had vehicles capable of it that had demonstrated the flights early on because of, yet again, one of these things. It sounds simple, but the little things do trip you up. And we ran into some problems with uh, you know, our valve actuation motion that we had seen in that 10 days of testing that we had before the flight, but we did not resolve in time for that. And we went ahead and flew, got our level one flights off, but uh, did get bit by that problem that we were aware that we had and hadn't resolved for the level two flights. Uh, since then, a uh, couple weeks after the flight, we have resolved those problems. We do have vehicles capable of going and winning the level two prize right now, although we've chosen to perhaps try a reconfigured version of our level one vehicle as the level two because it's a little more modern in our regards. Uh, 
So we're again, we're ready for the level two prize right now. Uh, it's probably going to be similar to the way it was last year, where we're pretty much ready a couple weeks after the, uh, the LLC, and then we go on and do other work that pays our commercial bills and so on uh, until the LLC comes by again. Then we'll bring the vehicles out, test them a few times, go out and try and take the level two prize. Now, I do want to make a few comments about how this competition has played out amongst the people that have put their effort into it and what's come out of it. And it's hard for me to read sometimes what people in Washington want out of a program like the Centennial Challenge. I, you know, I don't have a lot of insight into the minds of the, the legislatures that, uh, that wind up underwriting these things. But from my standpoint, it seems like it's been an amazingly successful program. For the amount of money that's been put at risk and actually awarded here, we've had a half dozen really serious teams. You know, there's actually probably more like uh, seven or eight teams that have been credible on there, but a half dozen of them have put out six-figure money on their own, you know, out of their own pockets to build and develop these vehicles. Uh, lots and lots of effort has gone in. And that's cash. That's not counting volunteer labor on how much you want to uh, you want to value that at. That's parts that these people have bought, services that they've procured, fabrication that they've had done to build these vehicles. And excitingly, as we could see in the video this year, if you looked at it a year ago, it was basically armadillo making flight. But now we've got a half dozen vehicles that are physical, tangible things with rocket engines on them that have at least hopped off the ground to some level of control. And that's really pretty impressive. As a growing commercial uh, enterprise here with Armadillo Aerospace, I, when I need to look towards hiring new people and bringing on people that have the skill sets that, you know, that will fit in with what we're doing and that will be able to help us kind of pursue our goals, there's now a ready crop of people that have skill sets that literally did not exist a few years ago. This type of race car rocketry, uh, it's not the way things are done in the modern aerospace world, but it was the way things were done, say, in the 50s in a lot of the experimental aircraft world. And I think it's a really wonderful thing that some of this is being engendered again. And I think that the prize has been you know, extremely valuable on a lot of these levels. Honestly, uh, obviously, I don't look at a prize unless, uh, I don't try to pursue it unless I actually think that I can make money at it. And it's probable that uh, this $350,000 doesn't quite cover what I've put into even things directly at the Lunar Lander Challenge, but I certainly expect to come back and take the million dollar prize and come out of this with, uh, you know, with a tidy profit in it. <laughs> But overall, I think the competition has been everything that anybody could have hoped for from out of it. At the beginning, when people thought we might go in and walk out the first year with both prizes, it would have been anticlimactic, and it would have looked like uh, just writing a check for Armadillo. But as it's turned out, with a couple years of delays in there and other people putting more work into it, uh, I think very much this was the race that a lot of people wanted the original Ansari X Prize to be, and it didn't turn out that way so much as being kind of a blowout there. But the Lunar Ch Lander Challenge has been a lot more competitive, in many ways a lot more innovative, because more things have gone out of the, the PowerPoints or drawing boards into physical reality to be tested, sort of in the crucible of competition. So I, I have very good feelings about how the competition has been, and we're not through it yet. We've got at least one more year, uh, and in all likelihood probably two, before all the second place prizes are swept up there. And I think it's probably going to be looked at as one of the most successful prize offerings considered. Thank you.